right, where are we at here? Okay, we've got, uh, yeah, we booted up into the install environment. Done all the pre-work. Let's go ahead and pack strap this thing. Tack K for the keys. Okay, and we're off. This will be a great install. We're doing one of my uh, servers. This is the um, mind test server that we talked about previously. Fired up the installer. It's ticking away. We're installing our packages. Everything's good with the world, man. Ooh, going, going. Oh. What the frick is going on? Keyring is not writable. Hmm. Well, I guess this is going to make a good video then, okay? Let's troubleshoot Arch. All right, that was an interesting start, but it's a good subject for a video. It's the arch failure. I've seen this particular failure before. I've troubleshot it a couple of times. It's uh, technically, it's not a failure of the arch installer. It's a failure of your uh, network, but we'll get into what actually causes it and what we can do about it. It does happen, and I've had, like I said, I've troubleshot this before, and I've actually looked online and had a lot of suggestions that some of them were interesting, some of them were good, some of them not so good, but uh, in this video, I'm going to go through exactly how I fixed the problem and what the issue actually was for me. If you have issues with the Arch install, it may or may not be this problem, but if you watch this video through, you can at least eliminate this as a possibility for an Arch install failing. Now this particular failure occurred towards the end of pack strapping where you load your programs onto your, uh, where you load the Arch system onto your uh, drive that you set up for it before actually changing root and uh, setting up Arch. And like I said, this is not really, well, it's not really a problem with the Arch installer so much as it is a network problem, but we'll get into that. And uh, I mean, the Arch installer could do things a little differently, but you know, it is what it is. So let's go ahead and get to this, okay? All right, before actually talking about the problem, let me go over my setup a little bit, what I was doing here and how I had things set up. So we're following the Arch installation guide located at the wiki arch.archlinux.org title installation underscore guide. This is the official Arch installation guide and that's what we were using here. I mean, I've done a couple of my own, but just to be on the safe side, I use the official one. I downloaded the uh, Arch install ISO, in this case Arch Linux 2024-0301. I verified the signature and I verified the checksum. File is authentic and it's not corrupted. This is what this told me. I loaded it to boot media and then I verified the boot media, in this case USB. So nothing wrong with the download or with the creation of the boot media. I booted it into the uh, live environment without, boy, these, this, this particular fade in is annoying. I'm going to use something different next time, but booted into the live environment, verified the key map, adjusted the terminal font, verified the boot mode, verified my internet connection, partitioned and formatted and mounted the dr particular drive, and then I ran pack strap and the install went down the drain. Yeah. So let's discuss the issue here. I mean, I could go through a lot of stuff, but let's just get right down to what the issue actually is. So the question, did I really, really, really check the system clock? Answer, yes, but not completely. And this is, like I said, this is something the Arch installer does. It's not necessarily a problem with the Arch installer. It's more of a network thing. 
So both Pac-Man and Pac-Strap need the key ring to be initialized. If it's not initialized, they won't load the software and it cannot initialize without getting a time sync. No time sync from an NPT in no time sync from an NTP server. No key ring. It's there, but not initialized and not writable. So some common causes for an issue like this for not receiving the NTP time sync. Well, first one and the one I'm dealing with here is network congestion. I say causes the time server to time out. I mean this happens now and then. Uh, basically you need to find a different time server. Although I will say I tried doing this install at 2 in the morning and it worked just fine. I tried doing it at 2 in the afternoon and I get the timeout errors until I selected a different time server and we'll talk about that. The other possibility is network management blocking ports that the time server uses. Uh, generally when they do this there is some sort of a fallback local time server which you'll probably have to ask and when I say block network ports, it's probably your ISP doing it. So you have to ask them. Okay, let's talk network time server. Because unless you're the network administrator, the blocking port might be kind of tough. If you go to ntppool.org, you can see a list of worldwide network time servers. You can see them in various regions here. I am going to be using the Asia servers because I'm in Asia Pacific, specifically the Philippines. So right off the bat, I can see server 0.asia.pool.ntp.org through uh, 3.asia.pool.ntp.org. These are general Asia servers. However, if we scroll down, we can see some more specific ones. Specifically, this is the Philippines has 2.ph.pool.ntp.org. I've used this one before. It's a busy, busy server. It's the only one in the Philippines. So I usually have better luck just going with uh, Asia 0, 1, and 2, and 3. Anyway, this site tracks the uh, servers, and it'll, you can go to your region and find out which servers are available. So I suggest if you're having this problem, finding a server that's actually physically close to you or geographically close to you, however you want to put it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. This is in the Arch install environment. So first thing I want to use is system control. Pipe it into grep and I'm looking for Pac-Man services. And you'll note the uh, pacman.init service. This one actually doesn't show up in your final install, but it's here. And while it's loaded, if it's inactive, it's dead. And the purpose is start initializes the pacman key ring, which since this service is dead, it never happened. Which is why we can't write to the key ring. Now, it's kind of hard to trace it back, so we'll jump up a few steps ahead here and look at the status of system D, time sync D, which is what's actually responsible for synchronization. And you can see it's active, it's enabled, but if you also look down here towards the bottom, you can see a lot of timeouts when talking to the 0.arch.pool.ntp.org through 3.arch.ntp.pool.org. NTP over servers. Uh, yeah, these servers are not worldwide super easily available. I've actually had less problems in the US with this sort of thing. I, I like I say, here in Asia Pacific and the Philippines, if the network's busy, I have problems syncing with these servers. I'm not quite sure where they're located, but I don't think they're geographically close to where I'm at. This is configured by, well, first let's look at the time date, time date control. And you can see here we've got a 
doesn't matter what the local time, universal time, RTC time, UTC time zone is, all what really matters here is system clock synchronized is no. That needs to be yes. NTP service is active, so yeah, look for synchronization, but as you saw, there was a bunch of timeouts. So what we need to do is we need to add a local NTP server or two or three, and then we need to restart the service. So the servers or this config file for uh, systemd timesync d is in Etsy systemd timesync d config, and we can see I'm not sure where the Arch servers come from because they're commented out here. They might be a default, but we're going to activate the NTP servers by removing the comment, and then we're going to enter 0.asia .ntp.pool or .pool.ntp 0.asia.pool.ntp.org and 1.asia.pool.ntp.org I usually put all the servers here because we're going to do 2 and 3 also maybe not necessary because I usually sync off the first or second server but just to be on the safe side All right, fat fingers, work. There we go. Okay. Save this. Okay, next thing we want to do is restart the system D dash time sync D service. So system control or CTL and restart. Then system D dash time sync D. You can put the service in or not, it's up to you. And then we can do a time date. Uh, you might want to wait a few seconds. And here we see yes, and we can see all our stuff's changed. I don't really need to set the time zone because it just needs the time sync and it knows it's UTC. When I do the final install, I'll actually change the uh, time zone, but don't need to worry about that right now. So now let's check our uh, Pac Man dash init status and we can see here if we look down at the bottom we did get a we can see we got a time sync and a finished initializing pac-man key ring so the key rings now initialized we should be able to do the install with no problems so that's going to be our next step all right let's go ahead and do the pack strap again and see what happens we use dash K or mount point and we're just going to install base and Linux and we're off to the races. We'll let this run through. My download speed shows me I do have network congestion of some sort. Here it usually starts about 6 in the morning and runs through about 8 or 9 at night. Okay, we're doing some different stuff here now, so the uh, pack strap is reacting differently. It's actually installing stuff. Oh, pending keys from archlinux.gpg, that's a good sign. Don't want to jinx it yet, though. Yes, we're definitely doing a lot more than we did last time around. Ow. 
actually seeing some updating. So we are installing and we're updating. And rebuilding. All the good stuff we're supposed to be doing. Possibly missing firmware. We didn't install Linux-firmware, so yeah. Although we're always going to have some missing firmware because some of the stuff is actually not even on this machine. Uh, we're doing the uh, boot initiate initial RAM at file system and we're done. Install took this time. So yeah, to fix our problem, we basically had to add a local time server that we could actually get a real time sync from. So that's it. Problem solved. Okay, that was fun and that was interesting. I say this is not the first time I've seen that problem. It's it can throw you for a loop initially if you're not too familiar with installing Arch. And like I say, it's not really a problem with the Arch install as it's a network congestion problem, or at least it was in this case. I've also seen it where a network was blocking the required ports and you'd get the same sort of thing. Uh, Again, I'm not sure why Arch requires the time tick before it does the key ring. Well, I can think of a couple possible security reasons for doing that, but I would think just setting the time to the correct time should be enough. But no, you have to set up the key ring. Anyway, it wasn't really that hard of a problem to fix, but it is a little annoying, so... I'm hoping this helps somebody. Uh, yeah, now I can go on to build the, uh, get the my, new mind test server running. My uh, nieces and nephews will be happy about that as the old one was getting a little wacky, a little wonky as they would say. Anyway, thank you all for uh, being here for this video and sitting through it and please like, subscribe and comment. And I'll see you next time I have a problem, maybe. Or, well, I've got a few things planned, but we'll get to them. So, see you later.